Bob and Cherry, sponsored by Bank of America Customized Cash Rewards Credit Card. You can earn 3% cash back on online shopping, making the essentials even more rewarding. Here's Bob and Sherry. What's going on here? The weekend. The weekend. Friday, Friday. Gotta get down on Friday. Friday. For most people, Friday is just a day before the weekend. I can't wait to the end of the week when I wrap it to the rhythm of a groovy beat. It is Friday, right? Oh, it is Friday, finally, and what a show we have for you today. The People's Movie Critic is reviewing Ryan Reynolds in Free Guy. Um, We're going to talk about um, how long it takes, really, seriously, to recover from having a baby and get your fitness back. We have comedian Jeannie Robertson. Good morning, everybody. Bob, how you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I got an email from a listener um, who shared Mm -hmm. something for the show today. I mm-hmm. mentioned a couple of weeks ago that my youngest, to celebrate getting all four wisdom teeth out and going on a week-long camping trip with um, her sister, got a homemade tattoo of a tooth on her arm. Remember? Yes. Remember that conversation? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. A friend of uh, Karamia's came over last night, and, and he got himself a homemade tattoo as he heads off for his semester abroad. I'm sure his parents are delighted. Anyway, listener emailed me and said... I think that um, your child made the right decision in having a homemade tooth tattoo placed on their arm. That's something you'll never regret. Play this one. (laughs) Play this one in in your rabbit hole for Bob. Love you guys. Love the show. And that is from Lindsay in Cedar Rapids. Thank you, Lindsay. Let's go down the rabbit hole. Bob and Sherry, go. Down the rabbit hole. Here's an Italian grandmother reacting to some tattoos. I'm going to get covered in tattoos. Oh, my neck, my arms, Come on, mom, your mother did the right thing. Get nice and clean and look what you did. I'm going to get covered in tattoos. Covered. Oh, you are sick in the head? Are you sick? You're not normal. I just want to get covered in tattoos. Why don't you take some medicine for your head? I'm going to get my neck done. I'm going to get my forehead. My forehead. I'm going to get my forehead done. Everything. My legs. My legs. My back. I gotta get my back done full of tattoos. If you do something like that, you're done with me. <gasps> you, you don't mean? wanna get a penny from me. What anymore. do you mean? Nothing anymore. Nothing because I got anymore. tattoos everywhere? Yeah. No, I don't want. That's not for you guys. You don't need the no neck and no neck. That's not for you I, guys. No, no. I gotta cover my shoulders. It's not my body. He wants to look stupid. Let him look stupid. Stop a lie. No, I can't. Your grandpa will be the first one that even look I, in your face. Toto said I could do it. No, yeah. Toto won't say nothing. Toto said it's nice. He said, but you have to get it in color. He said, you can't get a black and white because it needs to stand out. I gotta get my back done. I have to get my back done. Don't laugh, you stupid. I'm getting one too. She's, get, get she's going with me. Yeah, okay. We're gonna get Try. One. Try. She's gonna go with me. Let me see. Minya, you know what I do? On the, floor, the people they hear you say, I make embarrass you. Why? You see. What are you gonna tell them? Okay? Go and go take it off. Right now. We're gonna take off the tattoo? Come on. You gotta take off the tattoo? How are you gonna take off the tattoo? Your good. mother did Don nice. So. When well, you were born, you have nothing on your body. Your mother did nice work. You got to ruin it. Okay? Why? Why are you going to look so stupid? What do you mean? It's <laughs> okay, beautiful. You, got, you, you have all your arms all over, red body and everything. You look the ridiculous. When you when it's out with the, just a the t-shirt, it looks terrible. With all that Like an ex-convict. But when I get my neck done, it's going to look better. No, 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 no. You try. No, no, he's going to Let get me your see. Face. I swear on God. I swear on God. Let me see. No, no. What are you going to do? He's going to get okay. your face on his butt. Let me see. He's going to get your face on his butt. What if I get no one now? I'm going to stop it. No, 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 the cats, okay? <laughs> what if I get no one what if when I get my tattoo, I, I put no one no, 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 What no. about Domenica? None of all. No, I don't want it. I don't want it. You are fine just the way you are now. That's all. You try. What if I get a heart? I, I swear to God, you try. What if I get a heart that says no one in the middle? I don't want no one no, 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 no. I told you, I don't want nothing. What about no one's pizza? <laughs> no, no, what's happening? <laughs> Can I get no one's pizza? No. 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 And we need no one's pizza. We need no one's pizza. We need no one's pizza. Bye, Joe. It's a holiday. I love her. I, I, I can't, just love her. I can't wait to show Nona the tooth. 
<laughs> my, on the arm! My favorite thing is, is at the very end, she's so angry, and then some customers come by because she's running the pizza place. She's like, okay, hi. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I love how she, how, how she said, your mother makes, makes you perfect, and then you do this. <laughs> You're so stupid. <laughs> We're going to post this up on the Bob and Cherry Facebook so you can watch it. we got morons in the news coming up and the People's Movie Critic and a whole bunch more to kick off your weekend. It's Bob and Cherry. People, pay attention because I do not want to have to fail you. Bob and Cherry want you to help us salute deserving teachers. Five winners will receive a box of school supplies, Bob and Cherry swag, a Bob and Cherry branded Visa gift card worth $100, and a one-year Stamps.com subscription valued at two hundred dollars. Four and a half gold stars for you. Get discounted USPS and UPS postage right from your computer at Stamps.com. Use promo code Sherry to start a four-week trial plus free postage and a digital scale. May I have your attention? It's the Bob and Sherry Teacher Appreciation Contest. Enter your deserving teacher at BobandSherry.com. Sign up for the newsletter with Bob and Sherry exclusive articles. Sign up now at BobandSherry.com. People on Reddit have pointed out what movies get wrong about real life. And I think the folks that were commenting on these things are spot on. There's a picture of Harrison Ford kissing uh, Carrie Fisher. And the comment is, if a girl is arguing with you in real life and you kiss her to shut her up, in real life, she most likely will not appreciate it. But of course, <laughs> at, at that moment in Star Wars, you know, she shuts up and all of a sudden starts falling in love with him, right? Uh, I have to profession. say that when Go I'm ahead. mad at Kevin and he tries uh-huh. any of that, he's like, I knew it would make you in a better mood. You're wrong. <laughs> yeah, wrong. You're wrong. <laughs> and, and buddy, don't say that. Don't use those words. Uh, Young professionals or college students living in huge, fully furnished apartments in New York City. Yeah, that does not happen at all. And Friends is the obvious obvious, um, perpetrator of that, I think, for most people. This one has always killed me, and everybody has seen these scenes a thousand times. Five bad guys attack the good guy one at a time. Yes. If if you've ever have you ever seen like some video somebody has taken of you know a fight outside of a bar, it, it, if there's two or three guys against one guy, you know they may might not all pound on him at the same time, but they they do like a handoff. You know they don't just stand around waiting to see if their buddy is going to be the victor. You know that just does not happen Bob, in real life. I have never been in a fist fight with five. Um, Bond villains, but I've been in a room with five toddlers. There's no waiting turns to attack. It's all at once. Not, it's a swarm. Right. That's right. Uh, in the movies, what was that? Well, they never turn the lights on. They just go and look. In real life, if your wife hears something like, what was that? Go check. Put on every single light. Lock the bedroom door behind yourself as you're going out. Dial 911. That's never done in the movies. Never. <laughs> Nope. When the girl who is the main protagonist does not like him back, the main protagonist bothers her, stalks her for so long. She finally falls in love with him. In real life, she called the police. Or or, or it brother. would end very very badly. Right. Yeah. Right. With the, when the, the guy movies, can't take no for an answer in real life, it tends to end very badly. Very badly. In real life, with any kind of trial scene, there is always a dramatic moment where one of the attorneys presents a witness or a piece of evidence that completely changes the course of the trial, something that neither the judge or the opposing attorney knew about. Discovery deadline is something that you have to present if you're a lawyer. You've got to give a heads up to the court and to the opposing attorney. But no. That out said, of the blue. Bob, uh, yeah. In my lifetime, because I, you know, I like crime and procedural kind of stuff. So I watch a lot of that and kind of mm-hmm. entertainment. I read a lot of those books. In my lifetime, there has been one real life trial that acted like a movie trial. See if you can guess which one it was. It, I think it, 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 I think it was uh, OJ putting on the trying to put on the glove. The whole OJ trial felt like a mm-hmm. movie. Like, did it not mm-hmm. feel like a courtroom from a movie? Yeah, the grandstanding totally. dream team attorneys, the the judge cowed at every turn. Um, the the prosecutor you couldn't get away from it. 
the yeah. steely-eyed grimace of Marsha Clark, the right. overly emotive drama king of uh, the defendant, O.J. Simpson. You tell me that didn't feel like something out of a movie or TV show. Who was the guy that was the surfer dude guy that was living in the ghetto? Kato oh, Kalen. Kalen. Come on. <laughs> right Come right on. out of central casting he was. I know. You know you don't hear anything about that dude anymore, do you? Um, I have to wonder, what is his life like? Like, I know Mark yeah. Furman moved to Sandy Point, Idaho, and yeah. he, he does, he writes books and does various things. And right. he was a, a notorious figure from that trial. So we know that he mm. went on. Of course, Robert Kardashian um, passed away, but left us with the Kardashians as a lingering <laughs> residue on humanity. Um <laughs> But what you're right. What happened to Kato Kaylee? So, Marsha Clark has a TV show. I forget yeah. what it's called, but it's Marsha Clark Presents or something. Whatever happened to him? Um, so he has appeared in uh, one, two, three, four, at least 20 movies as an really? actor. Yes. Really? Uh, n- n- none of none of them. Like, here are some of them. Pauly Shore is dead. National Lampoon's Dorm Days 2. Uh, <laughs> Cyborg 3, The Recycler. Oh, he was in Hail Caesar uh, as a party guest. Oh, is, and is that right? That, I saw that. He's yeah. been in some TV shows as well. And I yeah. know that he was a radio personality. Um, he was a house guest in the second season of the reality show Celebrity Big Brother. He was evicted. <laughs> I, I always thought that he should have stayed in radio, but I guess he just had no chops. Doesn't he seem like the guy in a big city like L.A. or San Francisco or maybe New York that he's not the main guy on the radio show, but he's the buckethead guy almost? Yeah. And, but here's, and, you know, and he's got the perfect name, you know, Cato. Here's what's depressing about our industry is the guy was on on the stand in a murder trial and he was barely coherent. So he got a Los Angeles radio gig. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and and the fact that he didn't keep it was not because the the radio industry didn't try to help him out. It's because he couldn't get his words out of his mouth. No, what does that say about our business? I know. Well, actually, it says good things. He he flushed out. He he brought nothing to the table. He was not an entertaining person, really. He was just the surfer dude. That's that's how shot. you remember him with the great hair. Yeah. All right, we got morons in the news. Morons in the news. Some good ones, too. Straight ahead, this is Bob and Sherry. Morons in the news is sponsored by NHTSA. Bob and Sherry. You idiots. Here they are. He's a moron. He's acting like a complete idiot. Morons in the news. Fire crews were dispatched to a storage facility in a town called Herndon, Virginia, just the other day. Uh, It was a Friday, and a passerby noticed smoke billowing from inside one of the units smoke coming out of one of the units investigators determined that the fire was accidental and uh, the damage was substantial the fire damage totaled a hundred and sixty five thousand dollars wow and the cause of the blaze was lit candles inside the unit being too close to combustibles you know, it sounds really stupid, but I can't tell you how many times when I was single, I'd meet a girl at a bar and I'd say, can I get you to come over to my storage unit? You know, <laughs> what on earth? It, it's I, I've fixed it up. I've got some candles over there and, it, it, you know, it's just a nice sort of romantic glow uh, <laughs> and it's very private. It'll just be you and me in the storage unit. Were What's they up living? with that? Were they living in the storage unit or just no. entertaining? Yeah, this it, is was, the, it must have been entertaining. This is the next show on HGTV. People who want storage <laughs> units, they can entertain in. I know. <laughs> Don't you know that that is being done somewhere? Because you and I had a friend who had a rock band, and they used to rehearse at a storage unit because it was out in the middle of nowhere, and nobody would nobody would complain about the noise. You know there are so, there's somebody out there who has a very small apartment or something, and when he has a party, he he goes to the unit. I know that's happening. Look, I will never forget um, uh, the email we got from a listener. He went through a divorce. He was broke. He wa- he didn't have a lot of options. And he lived in his storage unit for six months. That's true. I remember that, too. Yeah. He had, like, an extension cord, like a drop cord. He right. had a little teeny tiny TV. He had a little hot plate. And he had a lamp. 
and it was the and a VCR, a VCR. And what is sadder than watching like old Schwarzenegger movies on VC on VHS tapes in your VCR in your storage unit? All by but, yourself in the dark. But at, no as I remember, he was he, he he didn't feel sorry for himself. He was fine with it. He no, was he saving liked money. It. Yeah, I, I think that he had gone through a divorce and he'd lost he had, everything and he yeah. was, he he was just I think he was glad to be alone. <laughs> you know what you was. know what what I remember about it was the ending of it because he said, I'm gonna have yeah. to get an apartment soon because I'm ready to start dating again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Little did he yeah. know that storage Storms units are the new yeah. uh hookup right. spots all right That's let's right. go to today's moron of the day i am so glad that these two guys are from france and not from florida it's uh clement dumay and paul rue de boisson they climbed inside the statue of christ the redeemer in rio and they climbed all the way up to the top and oh, they no. walked out onto the arms and watched the sunrise whoa Yep. You know, I have thought, Jesus, take me into your arms, but not in that not way. That. Holy cow. They snuck With- into the statue at night when it was closed. Wow. They climbed the very long spiral staircase and came out through a hatch on one of the arms, which you didn't even know was there necessarily. Yeah. And yeah. they took in the city for sunrise. The statues are outstretched arms. They span 91 feet and it's about um, 125 feet tall. Now, the adventure ended when one of the security guards at the site spotted the men because they stood out on the arms of the statue and demanded that they come down. They were arrested by the authorities once they got to the bottom, and they said it was worth it. They each had to post about $1,500 in bail, American. They have to appear before a judge, and they, they said, this isn't the first time that we've climbed an iconic architectural site. And it was worth it. The view was nice. Few people get a chance to see what we saw. And we felt like we were inside the skin of Christ. Meanwhile, the Brazilian authorities uh, do not find this amusing. And the pictures will blow your mind. And we're going to post them all on the Bob and Sherry Facebook. These are our morons of the day. I'm, I'm surprised there is not a uh, 24-hour security uh, force or at least a guard at the Christ the Redeemer statue, aren't you? There, There is, but these guys sneaked inside the statue and they Somehow weren't... Somehow they got by him. Wow. They got by wow. him and they weren't visible until the sun actually came up and the guards saw them up there. Yeah. I don't have that kind of courage, I don't think, to go I'm, up that high and I'm sit just... and watch the sun come up. I'm just so glad to give Florida a break today and point yeah, the finger at right. France for that's once. That's exactly right. Yeah. For once. All right, straight ahead, we've got an exciting new tool to help you manage stress. It's our gift to you, the Bob and Cherry listeners, plus comedian Jeannie Robertson and the People's Movie Critic. He's reviewing Free Guy starring Ryan Reynolds. It's Bob and Cherry. Swag you can use. Just hit shop at bobandsherry.com. We had a a rough start to the show this morning because one of Max's schnauzers was so loud that we we kept having to, like, Mojo, stop, Mojo, stop, because you (laughs) you could hear his snoring coming through. So, Max, I said, Max, can you can you roll off some sound of Mojo snoring? We need to create an app like that calm app. Um, people seem to like that, and it's helping a lot of folks manage their stress. We need the Mojo app, where instead of listening to rainfall, you listen to Max's schnauzer snoring, and you <laughs> snore your own stress away. Here is the debut of our brand new Mojo app. Study at the wheel, folks. <laughs> it's very, very soothing and comforting That's what for I'm some saying. reason. You know, for a schnauzer, schnauzer, um, he's got a big old nose, it sounds like. <laughs> That's some hefty snoring. I wish I could sleep the way he sleeps. I know, I know. 
Does he ever have dreams? Yes. Like when, he, and, and all of a sudden he starts uh, barking yeah. like he's chasing something so, or something's chasing him. Yeah. So when he barks, he goes like that, and his yeah, little legs yeah. are moving. So yeah, he's, yeah. He's chasing yeah. squirrels in his dreams. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so how long will he go doing that? He's he he's in here most of the time while I'm working. Now he doesn't always snore that loudly, but he'll <laughs> he'll go and go and go. Bob, Bob, it's been my experience that it goes on for the entire show, and I'm trying not to take it personally. <laughs> <laughs> does he does he follow you in from another room like he's going to work with you? Yes, that's exactly right. His job yeah. is to lay. His bed is in my little studio here, so his job uh, every day is to get into his bed and then sleep. Now there is the other dog. That dog is the stress inducer. Mm-hmm. If you're having a calm day, she'll induce stress on you. Mm-hmm. It's funny because um, Finn will get up, and if Mary is is working in the other side of the house, he will follow her in there, and sh- she'll say, all right, it's time to go to work, and he'll lie down and not move for like three hours. But if she's not here, I'm the one that gets that. And he'll come in and just sit right behind me. Isn't it funny? They just want to be with you, even while you're at work. We're going to post um, our new Mojo Snore Your Stress Away app on our Facebook. So you never have to be wigged out at work again. Here's the other. Any, sh- anytime you feel your blood boiling, just hit the Mojo app. Yeah. Here's the other schnauzer. That is, that is her. Oh, it's a she? Yeah. So and, and uh, Mojo is the is a is a boy. Yes, Mojo is a boy. Wow, I can and see who's dominating he's, the house. He's he's just a sweet, calm boy, and mm-hmm. Lucy's like a, an unruly toddler. Mm-hmm. All right, there you go, folks. You're welcome. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> Straight ahead. Now that you're calm and relaxed, you're all ready for. Comedian Jeannie Robertson will feature her straight ahead, plus the People's Movie Critic reviews Ryan Reynolds in Free Guy. It's Bob and Sherry. Do you own or rent your home? Sure you do, and I bet it can be hard work. You know what's easy? Bundling policies with GEICO. GEICO makes it easy to bundle your homeowner's or renter's insurance along with your auto policy. And that's a good thing, too, because you already have so much to do around your home. Just go to Geico.com, get a quote, and see how much you could save. It's Geico easy. Visit Geico.com today. That's Geico.com. It's the Bob and Sherry Store's Sizzling Summer Sidewalk Sale. Everything in stock is on sale, 10% off. 10% off. Including Sherry Lynch's cookbook, Cooking with Cats. And swag you can use, like Bob and Sherry 24-ounce latte mugs, travel mugs, H2Go water bottles and our very hot line of mother of all mothers merch including tote bags candles wear around tea and sleeve shirts 10 percent off it's the sizzling summer sidewalk sale everything is 10 percent off just hit shop at bob and sherry.com and use the discount code podcast at checkout Bob and Sherry, sponsored by Bank of America Customized Cash Rewards Credit Card. You can earn 3% cash back on online shopping, making the essentials even more rewarding. Here's Bob and Sherry. All right, it's time now for your Friday edition of Everyone Needs a Laugh, sponsored by Panera, just ahead of the People's Movie Critic. Um, Last weekend, a legendary um, comedian and storyteller and speaker passed away. Jeannie Robertson, if you... Um, if you're a country music fan or you grew up around the Nashville area, chances are you know who Jeannie was. She was just a force of nature, an amazing talent, incredible woman. And so we decided in honor of that to feature her today. And the great thing about her comedy style was uh, she always worked really, really clean. And it was all storytelling, right? She just kind of led you along in a little gentle story of something yeah. that really happened. Here's Jeannie Robertson. The true stuff is the best stuff. You can't make it up. Last February, I had a theater show in South Florida, and then I had one in Orlando and St. Pete. It was a little tour. So I was driving my rental car on the Florida Tollpike, 
and I wanted to stop. I needed to get gas, and I wanted just a bottle of water because I was dieting a little bit. You know, I'm tall, and y'all can't tell it, but I can balloon up. <laughs> And I got the gas and I went in and there were fast food chains everywhere and there were lines at every one of them. But one of them didn't have a line, but it had a big sign that said milkshakes. And I thought, forget the diet. I'm getting a milkshake. And I went over and as I came up to the counter, a family of four came and maybe the kids were five and six and a young couple. And we did that dance, you go ahead dance. And finally he said, it's going to take me a few minutes here. I said, thank you, I'll go ahead. And a young clerk came up. Now, I'm not making fun of your age group, but the conversation went like this. I said, I think I will have a vanilla milkshake. She said, we don't sell vanilla milkshakes. I said, oh, really? Are you out of vanilla milkshakes? No, ma'am, we're not out of vanilla milkshakes. And I said, oh, hmm. And then she went on and said, we sell chocolate milkshakes. We sell strawberry milkshakes. We just don't sell vanilla milkshakes. I said, not a problem. I will have a chocolate milkshake. And I looked at this young father and he nodded and said, that sounds good. She went over here and got out a stainless steel cup, the tall one that you make milkshakes in, put it under a machine and pulled down a handle and out came vanilla. <laughs> She filled up the whole cup. He looked at me and said, they must have replaced it while she was on break. <laughs> I said, I guess so, but I'm gonna get my vanilla milkshake. Then she stepped over two steps and put it under a machine and pulled down a lever and a squirt of chocolate came out. And then she did it again, but this time it gave out as though you knew that was all the chocolate. <laughs> On this, she was not daunted. She stepped over, put the whole thing under another machine, whirr, put it in a cup, put it in front of me and said, one chocolate milkshake. <laughs> and I said, well, I appreciate it. That's what I order. Thank you very much. And I turned to leave. And then I thought, what are people my age still doing on earth if we're not here to help the youth? <laughs> I said to the man, may I have another minute? He said, I'm going to watch it. <laughs> I stepped back up and said, can I talk to you just a minute? And I said, I got my chocolate milkshake and it's what it ordered and you've been very nice and I appreciate it. But I was just wondering, have you ever thought, <laughs> just maybe one day when you're on break, that if you just put the cup under that first machine over there, and the vanilla came out, and when you got to the top of the cup, you stopped right there, you just stopped. You would have a vanilla milkshake. She said, ma'am, we don't sell vanilla milkshakes. <laughs> I said, I know that, I understand that, but it would seem to me you could do that and your person would get what they want. She said, let me explain, and this shows you there are always two sides. This is the younger generation. She said, we are all on computers now. The way she said it was like, have you ever heard of a computer? <laughs> We're computerized now. We don't sell vanilla milkshakes and I couldn't you sell you that vanilla milkshake because there is not a button on this thing to mash <laughs> to charge you for a vanilla milkshake. I said, well, when I came along, if we had had that machine, we would punch chocolate and give the customer a vanilla milkshake. And I stared at her, and she stared back, and I saw the light bulb come on in her head. It's like, ding! Just lit up her ears, it came out of her eyes. She got it, and I said, just think about it sometime when you do. And I took my milkshake and walked away, and I got back to here, and I stopped to take the paper off the top of my straw and up stepped the family. And by now, his children wanted a chocolate milkshake. That's what they had seen me get. He stepped up and said, we'll have four chocolate milkshakes. And she said, we're out of chocolate milkshake. <laughs> <laughs> and then she looked past this man right at me and smiled and said, but I can get you four vanilla milkshakes if you want. <laughs> oh, she's lovely. 
The one and only Jeannie Robertson. What a career. We'll post that up on our website, B-O-B-A-N-D-S-H-E-R-I.com. Just click on stuff from the show and look for Everyone Needs a Laugh and don't go anywhere. We got the People's Movie Critic warming up. It's Bob and Sherry. Instant access to the podcast, podcast, and fun side. Just download the free Bob and Sherry app. I looked at a post over the weekend, and it was a group of people who came up with things they learned when they moved in with one another. You know, they've been seeing each other for a while. Maybe they got engaged. Maybe they got married, or they're just going to live together. But, you know, they've been living alone, and things that surprised them about living together with somebody. And the first one was from a woman, and she said, apparently my cat, who I raised since she was a kitten and loved more than life itself, is more than willing to abandon me and love someone else far more in the blink of an eye. (laughs) That's the situation here. Because Mary Mary found Kiki and um, was with Kiki for years before I came alone. But Kiki will let me pet her anytime I want. With Mary, eh, maybe, maybe not. Mary very, doesn't very let often. you pet her anytime you want. That's sad. You guys you think that's sad? Too long. That Mary won't let you pet her anytime you want? Are we talking no, about cat. Mary or the cat? Oh, the, the cat. cat. <laughs> oh. Oh. I understood what you meant, Bob. Did you really? <laughs> I did. Were you listening to me? Were you listening? Are you doing Tetris or something while I'm speaking here? Oh, busted. <laughs> um... Here's something else that uh, some people discovered when they moved in with one another. This is a gay couple. Well, this is uh, not for straight people, but I'll answer it anyway. Being part of a same-sex couple of similar size means your wardrobes kind of morph into one. Are you wearing my boxers? Yeah, but you're wearing my favorite jeans right now, so I couldn't live like that. Um. I don't know that. Well, I mean, if it doubled your wardrobe, that wouldn't be the worst thing, right? No, well, you wouldn't. I mean, I just, you're a guy, so you couldn't understand. I don't you wouldn't want. Share, you wouldn't share no, your clothes no, with your no, significant no, other? No. You wouldn't either, Max? Oh, maybe this is a guy thing. No, I want my clothes that I wore. Huh. Yeah. I am thinking of putting a sign in the laundry room. Do not, attention, do not wash or dry Bob's clothes. Capital letters. This means you. Don't touch them. I will handle them. Thank you, the management. I've lost two two T-shirts that I liked recently. So no, I'm not sharing. I'm not even sharing laundry right now. Stop sounding like a crank, okay? Stop sounding like a crank and get on with this. All right. Um, This is kind of sweet. If you and your partner are in different rooms, one of them will randomly decide to check in by opening the door smile, and then going back to their separate room. I do that at least twice a night with Mary because she's watching her stories in one room and I'm in the other side. I'll just go in there, how you doing? And then go right back again. That's kind of sweet, isn't it? Yeah, uh, or creepy. I mean, it's sweet in your case. Creepy. You to be sweet, but it could be like keeping up, keeping tabs, making sure what are you really doing? You said you were going to be watching you know, uh, Dateline, but are you texting an ex? Yeah, like some guys are really, and women are really jealous and controlling. Hmm. So in your case, it's sweet, but maybe not in every case. Well, you know, I say, how are you doing? And, you know, then sometimes, you know, she'll, you know, hold up her whiskey glass. And I know that I have to, you know, replenish that. So Um, this guy says, I always knew women went through toilet paper faster than men, but I never knew how much faster they did. It got to the point. I would just grab a pack of TP whenever I went to the store for any reason. We may not be out at home, but we will be soon, I thought. And I was never wrong about that. <laughs> I am doing that right now. It, not every time I go to the store, but every other time. And Lord, if I'm ever, ever near the Sam's Club, I'm going in. Because I know that stuff's going to be wasted. And there is no, there are evidently not words in the human language, in the English language, that you convince somebody to do that. <laughs> to back off. Do you, nope. I hear you laughing. Is it the same thing at your house? Um, I cured them of that by buying them this industrial one-ply toilet paper at the beginning of the pandemic when you couldn't get toilet paper anywhere. 
Um, when we're not using it for toilet paper in their in the girls' bathroom, uh, we sand furniture with it. It's just the worst. <laughs> it is so. Yeah. It's so but they stiff. Learned, huh? It's yeah. so stiff that it doesn't <laughs> right. crumple. It's ridiculous. Right. right. So there's uh, many things that we learn when we move in with one another. Those are only three or four of them right there. It's Bob and Sherry. Swag you can use. Just hit shop at bobandsherry.com. It is time now for the People's Movie Critic and his review of Ryan Reynolds in Free Guy. Hey, Lamar. Hey, I don't know if y'all know this about me, but I don't play video games, okay? I don't play video games because I hate video games. And, And I understand the obsession with them because I'm that way with TV. So, honestly, if you want to waste your life away with a controller in your hand, killing make-believe zombies, while I educate myself, enhance and contribute to the actual real life around me, and generally make the world a better place to live by binge-watching Yellowstone, Life Below Zero, and Columbo reruns, I'm going to try not to judge you, okay? I'm not. That's the kind of guy I am. But for me, the only thing worse than playing video games is when my kids were young and they would say, Daddy, come watch me play video games. My response was always, baby, I would love to, but I've already promised your mom I let her waterboard me in the kitchen, so maybe I can do it later. (laughs) Because I would rather go through anything than watch somebody play a video game. Oh, my God. So I tell you this so that you understand how much faith I have in Ryan Reynolds. Because Mm -hmm. I believed that if anybody could make a movie based on a video game entertaining, it would be him. And gladly, I was not wrong. Now, Free Guy has two things going on at the same time. One is where Millie, who's played by Jodie Comer, and her partner Keys, who's played by Joe Keery, have developed a video game with artificial intelligence in it. And it was stolen by the Tsunami Gaming Company, who is run by villain Antoine, who's played by Takai Watiti. And who used he used to have he used to have some regular games that didn't do much good, so he steals their stuff and he uses it to make this very popular free city game. Now, as part of the deal, Keys winds up working for Antoine at Tsunami. And he's trying to get over the fact that they got screwed over. Now, while this is happening, the other thing is going on. You're seeing the inside of Free City, inside the actual video game, where a guy who's played by Ryan Reynolds and his friend Buddy, who's played by Little Ray Howard, they go about their business every day. Because here's what happens. Every day, they get up. They drink the same coffee. They go to work at the same bank. They get robbed multiple times a day by the same robbers. They go home and do it again the next day. This is this is their life as those background characters in the video game. And the robbers and stuff are the players and they're coming in and robbing and that kind of stuff. So you're seeing this going on. But for some reason, guy wants more. He wants a relationship with a woman. So when he sees Molotov girl, which is Millie's in-game character, he knows that she is exactly what he's been looking for. So he begins to change what he does, which is normally impossible for a background character in a video game. He starts to change what he's doing and all these things. So this means to Millie and Keys that their artificial intelligence programming is working, and they have a chance to prove that Antoine has based his game on their stolen technology. They just have to go inside the video game to find the proof. Now, I know this sounds completely uninteresting and boring. It really does to me also. But Ryan Reynolds, along with some of the other cast performances, actually makes this pretty entertaining. It's an hour and 55 minutes long. It's rated PG-13 for video game violence and some language. Now, if there's any criticism, the movie was a little long. Uh, If they had cut out about 20 minutes, I think it would have really been great. But Ryan Reynolds is nothing less than amazing as an actor. I mean, he does play the same character in a lot of movies, the wise, uh, cracking, goofy guy who's falling and getting hit all over the place. You know, he's that guy. But he does it with the right nuance for each individual movie. And the real sleeper here is that uh, is the Taika Waititi. 
He is so over the top as the bad guy, he steals every scene that he's in. So here's my deal. So whether you're wasting away your life on video games or saving the world like me by watching TV, you should really have a pretty good laugh at this, okay? Uh, I give it at four buds. It was it was well worth watching. It really, And that's from somebody that hates that whole idea, but it was, it was good. You know, I know um, what you mean about Ryan uh, saving the movie. I just saw the Aretha Franklin movie, Respect, and yeah. it's a good movie, but it's not a great movie. If she were not in it, it would have been just boring because yes. uh, they didn't they didn't edit it tightly. But she just about saves it, as the New York Times said. So I know exactly what you mean. Hey, Lamar. Casting is everything. Hey, yes. Lamar. Yeah. Can you say the name of that actor that's the bad guy uncomfortably again? <laughs> oh, God. Taika Watiti? I mean, are you sure you're how can he be anything name, else right? but a, uh, an actor? Are you sure you're pronounced? I, I held back. I held back. That's exactly how you pronounce it. Don't think I didn't look that up. <laughs> oh, okay. oh so you saying I don't understand how to say Tyka? Is that what you're saying? It's Tyka. I mean, <laughs> is that the part you're having a trouble with? It's Tyka. T A I. Ty. Tyka. Yes. Tyka. It's very simple. We, very simple. <laughs> we've, we've got more of the people's movie <laughs> critics straight ahead. It's Bob and Sherry. Leave us a talk back. Talk back with the free Bob and Sherry app. Lamar is with us right now once again. And we always enjoy chatting with you, not just about movies, but what's going on in your life. So, what's going on in your life? Well, this week was Carla's birthday week. Mm-hmm. And so I'm big on celebrating, you know, and I'm I'm all about the the the, the big effort and everything and Yeah, so, it sounds that way. <laughs> so I mean, I got up the morning of her birthday, I got up really really early. I had made 30 different signs and I've got I've got signs all over the kitchen. I've got them everywhere, all kinds of birthday signs. I mean, it's uh-huh. crazy. And so I went by Costco and got some uh, a little small thing of flowers. I knew we were going out to eat that night, so I got a small thing of flowers to put on the counter. But they didn't have any roses that were in, you know, that I could use. So I called a florist and I had roses delivered to the place we were eating so they'd be on the table when we got there. And so um, I called to make sure that the flowers were there. And the lady answered the phone. I said, I just want to make sure flowers. She said, oh, yeah, we're all sitting here looking at them. She said, they're fantastic. They're fantastic. I said, well, good, good, good. I said, I normally get my flowers from Costco. And she goes, these didn't come from Costco. I'm like, what do you mean? She said, they're beautiful. I said, well, the flowers I get from Costco, they're beautiful too. And I hand deliver that. I was, I did this when Carla was working. So I would go get yeah, them. I remember. I, take them to the I remember. So, yeah. so we come into the restaurant, there's the flowers and they're gorgeous. And we sit down and Carla goes, these are breathtaking. I love these. She goes, well, these are great. They didn't come from Costco. And I'm like, what, what does that mean? Is that a cut? Is that a cut? She goes, no, 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 no. But you can just tell. These didn't come from Costco. She said, did you go get these at a florist? And I said, I did. She said, did you bring them over here? I said, no, I had them delivered. She goes, oh, God, they were delivered. And I'm sitting there, and while we're eating, we're all having a great time. But I'm sitting there going, okay, so let me get this straight. If I don't pay somebody an exorbitant amount of money to put these flowers together and then pay them to take them over there, they're not the same. Note to self, got to stop getting the Costco flowers. And they're beautiful flowers. So so the idea oh. is if you're going to have them delivered, it has to be by a delivery service or the uh, or, or the uh, delivery service no, the, of the florist, no, not the florist, you. The florist does it. But, I mean, you the have florist. to pay extra you know, for the delivery. Yeah. So, so, <clears throat> so I, evidently. I would I would have thought that the husband or the boyfriend carrying flowers into the office would be a bigger hit because everybody else, all the other women would see the flowers, but then they see the guy. That's that's not. A well, see, that hit. was a big hit. That was a big yeah. hit when she was working in the corporate world. But now that she's mm-hmm. a real estate agent, she works from home. So, you know, it, it's it's evidently right. a little bit different. And I will oh, say I the see, flowers yeah. were absolutely gorgeous, but I've got to yeah. rethink my whole program here. I got to rethink my whole program because I thought, man, I'm I'm doing well with these Costco flowers because they are gorgeous. Their flowers are fabulous. There I, I, are women listening right now saying, You don't need to rethink anything. I would give any I'd like to have a dandelion delivered to me. <laughs> 
they they do like to have that delivered from a florist. And, and yes. in fact, I got an email reminder on the, from the the florist that I had uh, to uh-huh. to send some flowers to an ex I had. They said, "Hey, why don't you surprise Katie with some flowers?" And I went, "Oh, if she got flowers for me, she'd be surprised." <laughs> Would would that not be just bizarre to have flowers delivered years later to somebody you broke up with? Oh, God. A computer glitch. Oh, God. Yeah, a computer glitch or something that like that. That would be hilarious. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that's Lamar, right. Well, listen, I, you're a great husband. I would. I just love flowers. I don't care if they come from Costco or the gas station. I think it's, in this case, it's the thought that counts. And by the way, that Facebook post that you put up about your smoking hot wife and her birthday... <laughs> Forget the flowers, my friend. Major, <laughs> major points. That's right. You do it well. You do it well. Hey, listen, you got to work. Man like me, get a woman like that. I got to work, man. I got to work. There you go. <laughs> that don't okay. come for free. That don't come for free. No. That's right. Oh, hey, yeah, once, you got that right. Once again, for anyone that missed the People's Movie Critics Review of Free Guy, we'll post it up on the Bob and Sherry Facebook. But how many buds, Lamar? Four. Four. Four, Four. solid okay. buds okay. for Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. It's Bob and Sherry. Bob and Sherry, sponsored by Bank of America Customized Cash Rewards Credit Card. You can earn 3% cash back on online shopping, making the essentials even more rewarding. Here's Bob and Sherry. Joining us right now in the Bob and Sherry show is Bob's wife, Mary. That's how she loves to be identified. And you can, under- <laughs> you can understand why she would prefer that. How are you, sweetheart? Good. Really? After that introduction. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Get a little closer to the microphone here. So I, I had a checkup the other day, and this doctor, he's a new doctor. He said, you want to get rid of those cholesterol medicines? Well, you better go to a plant-based diet or you're going to die. And I mentioned it to Mary, and she's actually created some recipes uh, and some, some uh, food uh, that is plant-based. And this morning, she has just cooked for me plant-based Sausage. So uh, I'm going to try it right now. And mm, that's that's good. That's really good. You're very close Is to this the, mic- the brand? In my face. I'm sorry about I'm sorry about my breath, but that's that's the smell of love. Is this the brand that the TV commercial has a kid going? I like it, and I'm a kid. Is it that one, Mary? Right now, I'm just using what you can find in the frozen section, and then he's all. He's been plant based for I think three or four days now. We had plant based chicken. They, didn't you think that they tasted like kind of like McDonald's chicken nuggets? Yes, yeah, so a put, little bit. Yeah, you, if you put them in the air fryer, they're good. Yeah, they were pretty good. So I don't know. Um, what else can we try? Because sausage and nuggets. I mean, that's good. But is is there like a plant based pork chop? Have you thought about just leaning into some plant-based proteins that aren't pretending to be farm animals? Like oven barbecued tofu is amazing and it's not pretending to be anything else. Yeah. Tofu though. I I don't like it either. The texture and it doesn't look, I know that I'm wrong. No, you're right. (laughs) And I've been, (laughs) no, it's a personal thing. Yeah. I mean, if if it's not your jam. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. I've yeah. been wrong about the other stuff too. So I'm, I'm, I'm opening up to it. But when you look at it in the refrigerated case, you're just like, Oh, yeah. how is that going to become teriyaki tacos? Sherry, could you stay out of our marriage place? Okay. <laughs> hey, I'll, I'll she, tell she's Mary, cooking what I like. No, I'll tell Mary something to try. If you go to, um, you can probably get it other places, but Trader Joe's has jackfruit, pulled jackfruit. That I has heard the, that's like pel- pulled pork. Pulled pork. Yeah. It makes great tacos, burritos, sandwiches. Um, I like it in like a grain bowl with some vegetables. What's and, it made out of? What's it made jack, out of? It's, it's made out of jackfruit. It's jackfruit. That's all it is, is jackfruit that's been it's, it's pulled gigantic, and cooked and spiced. It's a gigantic what? Um, fruit. fruit. It's a fruit? Is it a fruit? It's a fruit. Jackfruit. It yeah. looks like a gigantic gourd, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah they okay. sell it at Publix too now. Well, let's not yeah. go crazy with this. I mean, I really appreciate you doing this, and I know you want to keep me alive. I mean, who can blame you? Bob but, grew up, Mary. When I get into, some, when I get into something, in- I can't stop myself yeah see bob grew up in the northeast where being called a jackfruit was a kind of an insult but in this case it's an actual food that you don't have to worry about 
Um, I still don't give, up, <laughs> don't give up on tofu. If you get a block of tofu at the grocery store, there's more than one kind, mm. by the way. But if you get a block and you press it so that all you drain all the liquid out, it uh, changes what's the, the liquid. Te- it's just water with, you know, soy in it. So you drain the liquid, you press it with mm-hmm. a weight, like you would press cheese, like to make cheese. And then you can, it changes the texture of it. And then you can season it and cook it in the air fryer or in the oven and do all sorts of fun things with it. Or we could get a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. The to- we're not, I don't think we're going to be tofu. Are we tofu people? I don't well, think I we are. Well, I have a recipe. For, you do? Mm-hmm, for tacos, but it had... Um, miso powder or something, and I was like, miso you paste. Me- the, yeah, um, we're- oh, miso paste. You can get it at the grocery store in the refrigerated part of the fruit and vegetable aisle, or you can go to one of like the awesome Asian markets that where there's like so many different kinds of miso paste to choose from, and all sorts of great sauces and all sorts of miso ways not to eating tofu. It. <laughs> you say that Mom. because you don't know. You don't know how good it is. <laughs> That was a good one. That's that what you do all day. Uh huh. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you. Thank you for the uh, plant-based uh, sausage. Mm-hmm. Keep yeah. it up. Keep it up. You're doing good. Anything to keep you alive, Bob. Thank you, dear. All right. <laughs> so, Cher, thanks for the uh, thanks for the advice. I, you know, at least we're putting our feet in the water here. You know. Yeah, and also, you know, another way to eat a plant-based diet is to just go ahead and eat plants that aren't pretending to be anything else <gasps> like like black beans and like a, a Cuban black bean bowl with like brown rice and black beans and spices and garlic and lime juice. Mm. Please don't get into our marriage, Sherry. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's not what Mary said the last time we had drinks. <laughs> <laughs> it's Bob and Sherry. People pay attention because I do not want to have to fail you. Bob and Sherry want you to help us salute deserving teachers. Five winners will receive a box of school supplies, Bob and Sherry swag, a Bob and Sherry branded Visa gift card worth $100, and a one-year Stamps.com subscription valued at $200. Four and a half gold stars for you. Get discounted USPS and UPS postage right from your computer at Stamps.com. Use promo code Sherry to start a four-week trial plus free postage and a digital scale. May I have your attention? It's the Bob and Sherry Teacher Appreciation Contest. Enter your deserving teacher at Bob and Sherry.com. The Bob and Sherry website. The Oddcast. Contest info. Bob and Sherry.com. Talk back time. You can reach the show with our app. It's free in Google Play in the Apple Store. You just tap the microphone and talk. You can always DM us on any of the socials or email us at B-O-B-A-N-D-S-H-E-R-I.com. We have to uh, get a new phone number because we can't figure out where our old phone number is ringing. More on that soon. But in the meantime, let's go to talk back time. Hey, Bob and Sherry. This is Marna from Iowa, listener of yours every day. I wanted to thank you for the um, uh, telling me how to get rid of the skunk smell with my dogs because this morning at 5 a.m. they both ran into a small skunk. And so I told my husband he needed to go to the pharmacy and get me at least four Massengale douches so that we could wash the dogs, right? Doesn't that seem like, you know, a plan? Yeah. But I just thought I would share that with you because he um, promptly said, no, that is not going to happen. That if the dogs were to get cleaned up, that I needed to do it because I took them on the walk. Details, details. Why must men worry about the details thanks bob and cherry love listening to you guys uh thank you myrna i love you myrna in iowa explain what what she was talking about sherry why that was uh um because we you know you've you've heard your whole life um that the only way to get skunk out if a skunk gets your dog is to douse it in tomato juice but one of our listeners said oh no bob and sherry the best way to get skunk out of the dog is with massingill's douche And so she told a story about how she went to the drugstore to buy all the boxes of douche she could carry to give their dog a skunk bath. And the (laughs) the teenage boy at the checkout looked at all the boxes and looked at her and she said, sometimes you just want to feel fresh. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. 
<laughs> now, as far as uh, Marty's husband going, not wanting to go, all they have to do really is go get the products and then do the self checkout, right? So you don't have to face the kid. Most supermarkets have a, have a self checkout. What's the big deal, dude? Sam ran out of diapers and usually I get his, it's for diapers. Um, I use, my dog wears a diaper. Um, so I get these little Velcro bands from Amazon and then I get ladies um, heavy duty overnight poise pads at Costco and I cut them in half, slap them into that diaper. And it's a game changer, folks. If you have an, a dog that pees in the house, this is, you're welcome is all I'm going to say. But he ran out of diapers and I just did not feel like going to Costco because Costco on a Saturday afternoon is yeah. like, it's the busiest place in the world and the lines are, right. I just didn't feel like it. So I went right. to the grocery store and um, I get the pack of poise. And I, by the time I get from my car to the poise, I've run into four of my neighbors <laughs> and I just, you just don't want to have to keep explaining yourself to people because they right. look at what you're buying and they always say like something. So I went to the self checkout and I scanned mm -hmm. the poise pads and they were on sale with my loyalty card score. Oh, excellent. And um, the red light starts going off on the self-checkout. Attendant is on the way. Help is on the way. Help is on the <laughs> no. way. So here comes the attendant, teenage boy that probably went to school with Karen or Olivia. Um, and he goes, "What's what? Uh, let me help here. What, what's going on? I said, I don't know. He said, do, do you have your ID? I said, I don't think you get carded to buy these. And he looks at the package <laughs> and he looks at me and he goes, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> So oh, it, um, I feel for this guy who does not want to go to the drugstore and buy 13 boxes of Massengill because we all know what's going to happen. Yeah. No matter yeah. where he yeah. goes to check out, there's going to be a scene and it's going to price check. Yes, uh, this gentleman is trying to buy all of the Massengill we have in stock <laughs> and the guy will want the earth to swallow him up. Yeah, that's true, too. That's true, have too. Have some sympathy. Right. Yeah. It's Bob and Sherry. You read it once. I don't believe that. And then you read it again. I can't believe this. It's Bob and Cherry's. I don't believe this. Shit. I cannot believe this. Shit. This one is going out to every woman out there that has had a baby and struggled to get back into shape afterward. This mm -hmm. is going out to every woman out there who before having a baby was like working out and running and some kind of monster beast of fitness. And then they had the baby and it was hard to tie their shoes. This is for you. It's not your imagination. And forget celebrities who make this stuff look easy because researchers at the Martin Army Community Hospital in Georgia have studied female soldiers to see how quickly do they get their fitness back after giving birth? Now, oh, wow. these are soldiers. These are women yeah. at peak trained physical fitness. Mm -hmm. And here's what they learned. No matter how fit you are, the fittest of the fit before getting pregnant, only 30% of women were able to return to their pre-pregnancy fitness levels in one year after giving birth. That it took three years for 75% of the women to get it back. And here's why. In case you're thinking, well, it's because you're tired, because you're up all night with a baby, or your priorities have changed, or you just don't care that much about fitness, or you're making excuses, all of which I've heard over the years, all of mm -hmm. which I've heard. Mm -hmm. Here's the truth. Here's the deal. The reason that you can't get your fitness back so, so quickly after having a baby is because of the unbelievable impact carrying a child and delivering one has on your core and your abdomen and all those muscle groups. In fact, they found that it was relatively easy for women to recover their pre-pregnancy push-ups, right? Because mm -hmm. that's upper right. body, arm strength, mm -hmm. shoulder strength. That is minimally impacted by pregnancy. But when it comes to sit-ups or running or anything that uses your core and your mm -hmm. lower back, Forget about it, because not only are those muscles weaker than they used to be, but your ligaments and joints are much more supple and flexible for several months after you give birth. So not only do you not have the, the muscle strength and integrity that you had, but you're way increasing your risk of, of injury because your ligaments and, and your joints are not 
what they were mm-hmm. before you had right. the baby. Right. So I know that you're on your Instagram and some bee from the Real Housewives or Love Island or whatever had a baby and 10 seconds later she was climbing Mount Everest with a fully grown man tied to her back. That's bogus. That you do not need to judge yourself by those standards. That is not right. the yardstick that you should be measured by. If female soldiers need three years to fully get back their other core strength for their bodies to fully recover from the miracle of bringing another human being into this world, then you go ahead and give yourself a break and stop being so hateful to yourself that you haven't bounced back six weeks after you had the baby. Amen. Amen. Um, You know, as guys, we really can't um, fully appreciate what a woman's body goes through giving birth and then maybe you have a second or a third child that's an awful lot to uh, to go through i think it's really terrible that well-known celebrities will have a baby and these people have a lot of money for trainers and nutritionists and cooks and blah 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 and a lot of time off as a matter of fact in many cases that they post pictures of themselves on the beach in maui you know, 20 minutes after they uh, left the, uh, the recovery room. And, and women pick up People magazine and they look at that and they go, why not me? Uh, she's doing it. I know who she, who she is. I think it's so wrong that they do that. And I think there was, there are women and there are always, because my email is filling up right now with um, snarky messages from Chad demanding that I understand that some Olympian or WNBA player or Serena Williams had a baby and 10 minutes later won a gold medal. There are always going to be outliers, people that are superhuman, right? Mm -hmm. People Mm -hmm. that have just their next level. But for, for most of us, it's just not that way. And this right. like judgment and negativity and self hatred, uh uh-uh, uh sister, you're lucky if you get your whole your whole fitness back in three years. These are That's soldiers. Right. Instant access to the podcast, podcast, and fun side. Just download the free Bob and Sherry app. I found the most interesting website that I want to share with everybody right now. It's called Dudes Posting Their W's. Of course, that means wins. Uh, a lot of times, guys uh, don't want to puff themselves up, but there's nothing like the feeling of an accomplishment being noticed by somebody. So this website has collected a bunch of things that men have done. Sometimes they've done it themselves. Sometimes it's one of their relatives, but it needs to be spotlighted. And I'm going to start with the first one on dudes posting their W's. A but- there's three men, and they're holding these large horns in their hands. A biotech startup has managed to 3D print fake rhino horns that carry the same genetic fingerprint as the actual rhino horn. The company plans to flood Chinese rhino horn markets at one-eighth of the price of the original, undercutting the price poachers can get and forcing them out of killing rhinos eventually. you got to give those guys a round of applause. That is great. That is so good. Listen to this one. So yesterday, I put a nine-year-old girl on the stand to tell a jury about how her dad molested her. Later back at my office, she gave me a smiley face sticker and told me I did a good job. This is the most important award I have ever received. Wow. He's got the smiley face on his computer, so he he sees it every day. (laughs) Getting all choked up from that one. Um, This is from a guy named Ibrahim Muhammad. My criminal record kept me from getting a job, so I hired myself a... let Let me start this again. My criminal record kept me from getting a job, so I got a hot dog cart off of Craigslist and a Sam's Club membership, and I made $400 a day, 300 more than what an employer was offering. And it's a picture of the guy selling hot dogs. He is now an entrepreneur. Good for him. That's that's him. awesome. And the only bad news for him in that is when the government finds out he's an entrepreneur, they're going to take every hot dog he has. <laughs> yeah, but otherwise, it's awesome. Otherwise, it's great. 17 years ago, my wife and I sat in a room. We were told by a doctor our 11-year-old son had an incurable brain tumor and that he would not survive. Today, we saw him get married. He's the best person I know, and I'm so and I'm so proud to still have him. Isn't that wonderful? That is so great. This is about a guy who works um, in London. 
he is a rail worker. So he's, I don't know exactly what he does, but uh, he's on those trains all the time. He has, uh, up to this date, saved 29 people from taking their own lives through the power of talking, he said. Isn't that great? You know, uh, I was reading an article once about these people who volunteer at the Golden Gate Bridge to, yeah. t- to talk to people that um, are on the bridge contemplating ending their lives. And the, uh, there was a line in the article that um, stayed with me forever. One of the volunteers said, we're not heroes. It's just some folks um, are so feel so unseen and unheard mm-hmm. that all they needed was someone to show them kindness. Mm-hmm. You know, it's funny. I remember that they did an article about people who survived suicide attempts at the Golden mm-hmm. uh, Gate Bridge. And almost to a person, they said after they let go, they realized that whatever the situation was, it wasn't worth doing this. Yeah. Yeah. They regretted it. Yeah. The next one with dudes posting their W's is from Kent County, Michigan. And it's a picture of a courtroom. And there is what looks to be a young couple. And a little boy sitting next to them. I guess he's around 10 years old. And behind them, there are about 20 kids. A little boy's name is Michael. He brought his entire kindergarten class, so he's younger than 10. He brought his whole kindergarten class with him to witness his adoption. I love that. Uh, The next one is a middle school in Dallas organized a breakfast with dads event and then realized some students lacked father figures. And so the school made a Facebook post asking for 50 volunteers. The next morning, 600 men showed up. I remember that when it happened. I remember that hit my news feed. I do, too. I remembered it, too. And I think a lot of people heard that. But I think it's so great that I just wanted to repeat it. And we'll end with a guy. This is about himself. Uh, His name is Ronald. And he has a great big smile on his face. He is in front of what looks to be like an old Nissan. And I mean an old one. It's dirty. Looks like it's got some bad paint. And he said, so I bought my first car today all by myself after months of saving. And I am nothing but proud of myself. It's not the most fancy thing in the world, but it's something that gets me from point A to point B. And that's all that matters. And he's standing there with the uh, bill of sale and the keys to this old car. And I'll give him a round of applause, too. Way to go, Ron. So, uh... Once again, it's dudes posting their W's if you would like to see some inspirational things uh, online. It's Bob and Sherry. Leave us a talk back. Talk back with the free Bob and Sherry app. I read such a great article in Wired about cargo pants, um, and I want to speak in defense of cargo pants. It's a fashion trend that I always loved. Loved it. Don't care who's wearing it. Grown men, baby boys, women, cats. I don't care. I love cargo pants. And they were really hot for a long time. And then people started making fun of them like, oh, you're a dad in cargo shorts, that sort of thing. And, you know, it got really like uh, mocked, like a total symbol of you're completely out of date if you're wearing cargo pants. But Wired had a really interesting article about how um, the problem with cargo pants is not the cargo pants. It was that they were ahead of their time. When cargo pants first launched, people didn't have gigantic smartphones. And now that we do, the cargo pants are the perfect thing to wear to carry around your brick-sized phone slab. <laughs> I guess that's keys, true, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. and your keys. Um, the, right. the, the guy who wrote the cargo pants article said that, um, I walk. He, here's what he said. He said, I walk around in snug-fitting jeans with an enormous smartphone bulging from my pockets. I used to have extra pockets and nothing to put in them. Now I carry a bulky mini computer with me at all times, and I have nowhere to put it. It's awkward to walk around this way, and the tension becomes so great when I sit down that I'm forced to put my phone on the table like an a-hole as if I'm expecting an important call. <laughs> he's and he said, right. he said and now add i've got my giant smartphone i have my keys i have my wallet and i have masks that i carry bring back cargo pants cargo pants i never understood why um why why guys didn't like those cargo pants are like they're like a backpack you can wear they are so handy. I mean, you can, if you have the right pair of cargo pants, you can put a medium-sized McDonald's Coke in the pocket on your leg and walk around. Why <laughs> I have would never you had not a pair. want... Why not, Bob? Why not? 
Um, well, I mean, part of it is that I am not tall. And so something that is kind of uh, blousey as pants, the kind of, you know, blouse out. You don't see tight cargo pants very often. Yeah, now you and do. And then you put... You put something in, you know, the pocket in the leg, and it and it sticks out, and it just it makes me look like a walking mailbox. I mean, uh, I I just don't like the look. Skinny cargos. Are you, are you are saying the they have they have tighter ones now? Skinny, yep, skinny tight cargos. I have um where a couple of where pairs. where do you get those? I've never Gap, seen them anywhere. Gap, Banana Republic, um, they're and they're great. They're stretchy. They have a little bit of stretch in them, like skinny jeans, mm -hmm. but they've got those awesome side pockets, and there is no better place. Like when I'm chasing one of the little kids around, there is no better mm -hmm. place for your phone than in the side pocket. I'm right-handed, so I drop my phone in that side cargo pocket on my right leg. Boom, it's right there when I need it. And it's the guy is right. Flap. The guy, The guy is right about the phone. I mean, I don't have a great big phone. I have an iPhone, but it's not a real big one. But nonetheless, if I go to a restaurant and uh, I want to sit, I, I have to put it in, you know, my pants walking in or I'm carrying it around in my hand all the time, which, you know, I don't like that look either. Um, not that the paparazzi are trailing me. I don't know why I even care. But I don't want to be one of those guys that's got to have that phone out all the time. And I worry when I put it down on the restaurant table that I'm going to walk away and leave it. I admit the cargo pants would be um, a game changer that way. I'll have to look over the gap or wherever. I, I think, but I, I think just, you'd look I don't good know. in some. I, don't know. Uh, I think you'd look good in some skinny tight cargos. I do. I do. Max, where do you come down on the whole cargo pants? Situation? You know, they're really, they, you're right. They really are functional. If you do a lot of hiking, they're really functional for that. But every time I hear somebody say, oh, they're really uncool, I'll go to the store to buy shorts and half of them are cargo shorts. So Still? no matter Still. how much people think that they are uncool and, and people uh, uh, say things about them, People still want them, and uh, there's a lot of people still wearing cargo shorts. A lot of guys still wearing them. You, this, know, what, this, you know what I didn't like uh, uh, shorts-wise, style-wise? And they've been in. They've been forcing us for the last two or three years, uh, uh, we men, um, Bermuda shorts that are a bit on the tight side. I don't like that look. Unless you're a 19-year-old who basically has the metabolism of a gerbil um or, i think that's a tough look to pull off and even if you are that person i don't know the type bermuda shorts on a guy just kind of look effeminate it looks like gopher from the love boat to short, me but yeah, yeah short shorts are in for men a yeah. lot of guys are wearing them. yeah i saw that yeah not for this man no. No. um the other thing that the guy who wrote the article and Wired said was, it's not even just phones, wallets, keys, and masks. It's also your AirPods, the charging case, the multi-tool, your kid's sippy cup. It's all of that. Take just, the shame out of home. your game. Just Take the shame home. out of your game that. and <laughs> wear your cargoes. <laughs> it's Bob and Sherry. People, pay attention because I do not want to have to fail you. Bob and Sherry want you to help us salute deserving teachers. Five winners will receive a box of school supplies, Bob and Sherry swag, a Bob and Sherry branded Visa gift card worth $100, and a one-year Stamps.com subscription valued at $200. Four and a half gold stars for you. Get discounted USPS and UPS postage right from your computer at Stamps.com. Use promo code SHERRY to start a four-week trial plus free postage and a digital scale. May I have your attention? It's the Bob and Sherry Teacher Appreciation Contest. Enter your deserving teacher at Bob and Sherry.com. Instant access to the podcast, podcast, and fun side. Just download the free Bob and Sherry app. Well, if you uh, weren't with us a few minutes ago, Sherry was uh, enlightening us about the new popularity of skinny cargo jeans or pants. Because people, you know, you're carrying around a cell phone, you got masks now, and who knows what else. And cargo pants, for that reason, are very, very helpful. So you won't leave your phone somewhere. I've never been a fan, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna look for the the skinnier version of them when I go to a store next time. It's interesting how some new inventions or protocols have sprung up because of the COVID virus and now the uh, even worse variant virus. Um, I went to uh, a checkup over at a doctor's office the other day, you know, just the regular yearly checkup. And I walked in and went up to the reception area. It's a small operation. 
and uh, I, you know, there's the glass thing, and I figured, you know, I'm going to give them my insurance card and fill out something, and then somebody will probably come over and take my temperature. And uh, as I walked up, she said, "Sir, would you turn to the right?" And there was a little machine, and it was me, a picture of me, a, a video of me in the machine. And she said, "Just just turn and, and look straight at it." And all of a sudden, in the machine, uh, a, a line around my body occurred and uh, focused on my neck up, my head. And you heard the machine say, 98.6, 98.6. I was about two feet, three feet away from the machine, and it could read my temperature. And and the receptionist didn't have to do a thing. And she, I watched her. She just wrote it down. Yes, sir. Thank you. You have a seat. We'll call you. I've never seen one of those things before that could do it that quickly. You didn't have to press anything. You didn't have to take your temperature. I didn't have to drop my pants. None of that at all. I just looked at it, and there it was. I don't think that it, I don't think that thing existed, at least for uh, most offices, prior to all of this. I, I had a, a similar experience when I went to visit someone at the hospital. The hospital that they were in had that exact technology. But uh -huh. I looked, because I keep notes on all the shows that we do. And in January of 2020, we did, um, we did a segment on the show where we talked about these roving mobile robots in China mm -hmm. that were sweeping the streets of Wuhan taking people's temperatures and um, oh, enforcing yeah. quarantine. And I'll yeah. remind you that in January 2020, COVID was not on most people's radar. Like no. The idea that this was coming for us. And we mm -hmm. could, I mean, I could probably find the day and we could pull that break and listen to it and be totally wigged out by the conversation that we had about, can you imagine what it would be like if you got your temperature taken everywhere? If you had to wear, you know, I think that was that. January. I think it that was, was January, January. Mm -hmm. because I keep um, old school black and white composition notebooks like I had when I was in Catholic school. And I take notes on every day and they're not super detailed, but I can go back and find that day and time mm. and tell you when we talked about that, those. And it was really eerie because I saw I remember watching video of these empty, deserted streets in this city in China and these robotic um, temperature machines just mm -hmm. kind of cruising along. And it was like um, a scary science fiction movie. And well, now the Chinese, the Chinese were not releasing any uh, valuable information. They, they were pretty much locking down to the world. You know, they let a little bit in the CDC, try to get in there and get more information. And they were pretty uh, tight lipped about it. It wasn't until truly about two months later uh, that it really became serious. And then uh, in March, it became scary. And it was just, it's interesting because um, I went back, this was a while ago, this was probably eight or nine months ago, I went back and mm -hmm. actually listened to that segment, and it gives you the willies, because what, what we were talking about and coming. describing was, yeah. we didn't even know how soon it was coming yeah. to us, yeah. right, in January, we had no idea. That's right. So I think that technology that you're describing, it's got to be expensive, but I yeah. bet you're going to start seeing that in all your healthcare settings, you will. Big businesses, schools, big public courthouses, that kind of thing. I don't, I don't think it could be that expensive. The The doctor uh, practice that I go to is a small one. This is this is not a great big hospital. So if they could afford it, it's it's probably the prices either come down or it's not that expensive. It was For me, it was just amazing that you could just stand there and, and they take your temperature. <laughs> yeah. It's fantastic, really, yeah. when you think about it. It's Bob and Sherry. Now, let's open up the Bob and Sherry archive vault i mean no disrespect here at all but sometimes when all of a sudden you have to talk to somebody because you need something done from a business you're doing business with you're connected to their call center in bombay india and i don't know if you're like me even though they speak i don't speak uh any other language other than english and i struggle with that I respect them for knowing a couple of languages, but I am ill at ease sometimes that they don't get the nuance, that they don't understand what I'm saying. Do you know what I mean? I mean, tell the people what you went through briefly. Yesterday. I went through the same thing. So I have a Sears appliance that needs fixing, and the only people that can fix it are Sears. So I call Sears, where America shops, and they answer the phone in Bangalore, which made perfect sense to me. Sure. And, um, and they, they, you know, they, I give them my name, I give them my phone number. 
I bought the appliance at Sears with a Sears credit card as myself. We cannot find you in the computer. I said, you must find me in the computer. I give them another number. I give them another number. I'm giving them phone numbers my parents had in Wyoming when I was seven. Right? <laughs> They finally find me in the computer. Oh, we have found you in the computer. Oh, your your problem is you have a Kenmore Elite. Ding! The phone goes dead. I'm disconnected. So now I have to call back to Bangalore, which I do. And I get, of course, a different technician. Right. And they, they read the script. You know, you're calling Sears and blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, I just was on the line with you. I was disconnected. Here's my name. We cannot find you in the computer. I said, I just went through this. You have three seconds or I'm going to lose my mind. We are finding you in the computer now. <laughs> right there. Hold it right there. <laughs> that is what you call Eastern merging with Western civilization. Absolutely. Because you have this very polite person who really wants this job. And then you have the cowboy who is saying, it's high noon. <laughs> and, and I'm going to pull my gun if I don't get what I want. It's the two societies merging. It's perfect. So now we're in the computer and um, the guy says, because the first person was a woman, now I've got a guy. The guy says to me, and their English is so formal and beautiful. And I'm with you. I speak no Farsi or right. any Indian dialect. I, you not, have to have respect. Nothing. His English was so formal and beautiful. He said, it is possible that a technician may come to your home on Saturday. And if this is suitable for you, that technician will arrive between the hours of 8 a.m. and noon. Does that make it convenient for you? And I said, it was so beautifully done. Yeah, it is nice. They're so polite. I said, um, that, that would be fine. And when the technician comes, will he be able to repair the problem? When the technician arrives, he will be fully equipped with a complete understanding of your issue. And he will solve your problem, we believe. You know what? I'm good with that. Okay, fine. I had the same thing that happened uh, the day before yesterday. I got an email from a security comp- uh, internet security company, and they're saying, "I'm gonna, we're gonna charge you uh, your card uh, thirty-five dollars for automatic renewal." And I've got everything that I need. Right. Okay. I don't need another one. It's just gonna slow it down. So um, I went, "Ooh, I don't want that," and I want my money back. So I called them up once again. I'm in. I'm in India, and uh, hello. Uh, yes, I don't want that on. Oh, why do you not want it on? I've got everything I need for the thing. So you want us to take it off? I said, yeah, I do. And so we go through the whole thing. They're very nice, and they're going to take it off. Can you tell me the reason that you would like to have it taken off? I said, and this is, again, East meeting West. Here's the reason. These guys are screwing me, and they're screwing other people because you get some older person who can't figure out how this works, and then they just charge them, and they get their $35. Then you multiply that by about a million people. You know what you got then? $35 million. They do this because they think people are too lazy. Well, guess what? I'm not. Pause. We have already done what you have asked, and thank you very much. I hope you have a fine day. It does calm you down. Oh, yeah. I, I would love to be in the coffee room <laughs> for those people I at the know. call center I are. Know. Hear what we, they say. We got two from the same area code. <laughs> Crazy, Mo. Crazy. You can hear more from the Bob and Sherry archives at bobandsherry.com. Get Bob and Sherry swag in our store at bobandsherry.com. I have a friend whose job um, is remote, 100% permanent remote. Uh-huh. And so she works from home all the time. And right. um, she has a second full-time job that is also 100% permanent remote work from home. So she's working two full-time jobs from home. Neither job knows about the other because she got into some debt in the beginning of the pandemic and is trying to get to dig out from under. So now mm-hmm. she's working not one, but two full-time jobs. And then she told me recently that she's accepted a third three full-time jobs, all remote work, all work from home. None of them know about each other. And I thought she was the only one, and I don't know how she's doing it. She works seven days a week um, from uh, before the sun comes up until about 10 o'clock at night. But she's she's digging her way out of debt. And so it's mm-hmm. it's been good for her, right? Mm-hmm. There was an right. article... Um, I had mentioned another friend of ours. I was like, I don't know how she's doing it. And that friend sent me a link to a Wall Street Journal article. Apparently, all around us, there are people doing this, and we have no idea. No people kidding. working multiple full-time jobs from home. Oh, that makes sense. Because they can, and it's extra money. And if you, 
if you think about it, some jobs, not like being an ICU nurse, for example, or a teacher, but there are some jobs where you're not working eight hours a day. You know, like the work comes in bursts yeah, and then, yeah. you know, there, there's not a lot and then there's bursts and then there's not a lot. Well, it is the, that's the kind of work that she does where she'll have these really intense periods where she can't even like stop to eat. And then a couple of hours or a whole day where there's really nothing but answering emails and taking phone calls. So hmm. on the days that are slow on one job, she piles into the next job. And she's just been juggling and balancing this. Sometimes everything's busy all at once. And that's why she'll be up at four o'clock in the morning on a Sunday and work till 10 o'clock that night. And you can only do that if you're working remote because you're, yep. if you're at a regular job and somebody walks by and they hear you hustling for another gig, <laughs> you're not going to be at that first job very long. Exactly. That's something. Yeah. I never thought about that, that people could double dip if they wanted to. I didn't either. And so I'm reading this article in the Wall Street Journal and I was like, oh my gosh, so many people are doing this. And it just makes sense. Again, depending on the kind of job that you have. And we, we all, um, like my early TV jobs, we would be really insanely busy sometimes and then mm -hmm. literally playing solitaire on our computers other times like nothing to do or everything to do there was no in between you were either looking busy or you were working your butt off one of my um tv jobs i after i got hired i went to the guy that hired me and said i need something to do and he went like this shh <laughs> <laughs> oh, i bet you you were killing the job basically. he said listen he said listen to me there are going to be days where you work 20 hours times like this why don't you find a book or something <laughs> like, mm -hmm. literally like permission to find some other way to fill the time so that would have been a great gig to have work from home where you could double dip a second speaking job. speaking of great great gigs um i had this pulled up i can't believe i had it pulled up while you uh, were talking about this a few people posted the best gig they ever had uh, it didn't last forever, but it was the best gig they ever had for the money and the work that they did. And I'll just read one of them. This person said it was a woman, I think. I worked as a massage model at a massage school. My job was to lay there and be massaged for a few hours while the students did their lessons or took their exams. $30 an hour, but better than the $10 an hour I had at an office. She just is massaged for hour and hour and hour every day. How do you get that gig? I mean, is, seriously. The, is, that not, is that not something? But listen to this one. This guy says, my next door neighbor, this is like out of the Simpsons. My next door neighbor works in a power station, a nuclear power station. His job is to sit in front of a monitor and make sure everything is working well. If something goes wrong, he calls the appropriate workstation and they fix the problem. Because an alarm sounds if something is out of sync, which rarely happens, he is able to play games or read a book 99% of the workday. He is getting paid $150 per hour to basically play games and chill at work. How do you get that job? <laughs> <laughs> that is, that's a gig right there. Oh, oh that it, wasn't it, rhetorical. No, seriously, literally, <laughs> how do you get that yeah, job? Yeah, <laughs> I know, I know. And an alarm will go off. So you don't, He's he doesn't really have to be studying the monitors because it automatically clues, uh, cues the sound thing. And then he goes and tells whoever it is uh, that there's a problem. 150 bucks an hour, wow. And you thought you thought you had a sweet gig. I know. <laughs> I know. Sweet gig. That is a it's, sweet gig. It's Bob and Sherry. Hey, thank you so much for listening to the Bob and Sherry podcast and the Bob and Sherry Oddcast. We would love if you would subscribe, rate and review, and share it with a friend on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, wherever you go. And thank you again for listening. 
Hey, I'm EJ Dixon. And I'm Brittany Spanos. We're both Rolling Stone writers. Brittany covers pop music, fandom, and race. And EJ reports on everything internet culture related, from influencers to far-right extremist groups to OnlyFans. And we both spend an insane amount of time on TikTok. Literally so many hours. Every single day. My feed is all wacky family stories, aesthetically pleasing cooking videos, and hot guys. And mine is primarily Y2K makeup tutorials, true crime conspiracy theories, and bisexual thirst traps. So it feels right that we put all of those hours of scrolling and laughing at our phones to more productive use. That's why we're hosting Don't Let This Flop, a weekly podcast about what's happening on TikTok. We'll keep you up to date on the big trends, the wackiest stories, and who is who in the TikTok extended universe. There will be interviews with content creators we follow, fellow journalists who have reported brilliantly on the app, and much more. As fellow millennials, we understand how overwhelming it can be to try to keep up with who's dating who, what dance is trending, or who's getting canceled. So we've created this podcast to try to keep you and us up to speed. You don't want to miss it. Subscribe to us on Apple, Spotify, and anywhere else you get your podcast fix. And please, don't let this flop. We're joking, but also not really. <laughs> <laughs>